Representatives of the law are not strangers to ghosts in Woodstock either. Paul Hansen spent years putting up with Benny Swim's hijinks. Of course, you could hardly blame Benny for haunting the Carlton County Jail. Even a murderer might be justified in thinking that three dates with the hangman were cause for undue stress. Benny was in love with a girl named Olive Swim, who was his cousin. And they came from out back of Heartland, Coldstream area, Rockland, not sure just where. And she married a fellow by the name of Harvey Trenholm and moved from the Coldstream, Rockland area into an area below Woodstock called Benton. Well, Benny was still deeply in love with her, so he decided that he would go down and reclaim her, so to speak, and uh, anyway, as a result of that, he, he traded his fiddle with a fellow in, in uh, Coldstream, Ed Estabrooks, for a, a pistol. He made his way down by train and by horse and wagon to Benton and found where they were living and murdered the two of them. And he left the scene and proceeded towards Debec and he got into this farm and he had tried to kill himself and Sheriff Foster was able to track the, uh, the blood in the snow and, and uh, found out where he was. And when he found Benny, why, of course he's naturally arrested, brought to Woodstock and uh, went to court and was arraigned for murder and housed here at the jail until he was eventually hung. This is one of the original cells of the jail and in all probability, there are six of them and Benny would have probably been housed in one of these, possibly this one. This is where the hanging would have taken place. This is the, the uh, yard that the, the judge mentions in the his, in his summary after the fouled up hanging of it couldn't have been more public if it had been in the town square. And with Maple Street just a few paces away from us, uh, this is where the gallows is believed to have been erected and the window up there would have been to the floor of the gallows and the body would have dropped down and the sheriff and the members of the panel that was in, uh, here would have they would have taken the body in to that hallway and there they would they determined that he was still alive and then he would have been taken upstairs again uh, for the second uh, second hanging. And through the window once again, and down through. And down through. And then I guess they left him a little longer this time, to be sure. They left him a total sure. of 19 yeah, minutes 19 and a different minutes. hangman. Yeah. They had two hangmen. Yeah, a sober one, I think, the second time. Well, uh, he, I believe he must more have been. More sober. <laughs> <laughs> the more sober of the two. And. Uh, of course, the, the story goes that with Sheriff Foster was crying when the body was brought in, and he said, my mandate is that he's to be hanged by the neck until dead, and we've got to hang him until he's dead. And that's why he was hung the second time. Personally, I don't blame Benny one little bit for haunting this jail. I mean, if I were Benny, I'd be haunting it too. Let's go <laughs> see where he haunted. <laughs> Uh, you had some experiences yourself with what could have been, I put in quotes, uh, Benny, and one of them relates to uh, uh, this spot up here in the kitchen where the sink used to be. Right. used to be a double sink that sat here, and the stove was just over to our left, and we would come up at midnight and put the kettle on to make a cup of coffee, and you would leave and go out 
and come back, and the water would be running. The kettle would be boiling away, but there would be the water running. Well, you wouldn't leave the water running if you fill your tea, tea kettle up and turn the water off. And there's different times you'd come up. And this not only happened to me, it happened to other officers too. On occasion they would come up and, who left the water running? Her. I thought I turned the water off. And then there was also the lights. The lights was a, of course we all do that at home too, but come in, turn the lights all off, go downstairs, everything be quiet and come up. Who left the light on? I thought I turned that off. And this would happen different times with, with people. But Benny did like water, didn't he? Because did you have another experience? Perhaps we could go downstairs and see the see what happened. Yes, down, down in the shower yeah. in the basement. Yes. yes. Okay, this area here had a shower. And this area was designed for showering inmates when they were in segregation. In the course of the duties of a supervisor, we had to do an inspection of different areas of the jail. I came down here one morning and I could hear water running. I come back here and there was water on cold and the water was flowing profusely. So I turned the water off, I went back and signed the log book and I checked to see who done their last inspection and went upstairs and checked with the other staff and to see if anybody had been down there and nobody had been and nobody had been for a few days I guess, nobody uh, housed in the cells down here and yet the water was running quite freely and it was cold water. This room here we kept inmates' personal property in. When they come in, when inmates admitted, all their personal effects are changed, they're taken from them, and they're changed into jail clothes. And the personal clothes are washed and stored up here in these different bins. So I was up here one night, and there must have been an inmate getting released in the morning, and I was getting his stuff ready to have it all ready for the day shift. And I would have been in there a few feet, and suddenly this loud, bang like a piece of two before or somebody dropped a plank on the floor right out here in this hallway and I stopped and I come back out and looked and I thought I might have knocked something over or something was ready to fall over and there was nothing to be seen and I looked around and we have we had two-way radios then so with the officer working downstairs he had heard the sound so anyway, I left the area and went downstairs, and he said, what was that noise up there? And I said, I don't know what it was. And I still don't know what it was. Was it you, or was it one of the others that was up here one time and, and thought you heard a voice? That was another officer that heard that, mm -hmm. experienced that. And he talked about that, about uh, feeling this feeling on the back of his neck like a spider web or something, or, and uh, and then thought he could hear a voice, come on back, come on back. But that was his experience, and uh, he was telling us about that. Was it you or one of the other jailers who uh, really heard him one night? It was one of the other officers who was related to the experience of being, I believe, on this floor and hearing footsteps upstairs, which would be on the second floor. And uh, this uh, incident apparently occurred when he was working alone and he could hear footsteps on the second floor and as he uh, went around to check why everybody was asleep and there was nobody upstairs. There was no inmates housed upstairs at that time. 